Hey folks, so this video is brought to you thanks to Raid Shadow Legends. Now what are we looking at? We're looking at what I consider the five best fantasy movies or movie franchises that include the best arms and armour. So that's not necessarily the most historically accurate, because obviously with fantasy it's not necessarily historically accurate. Uh, but it could be, in some cases, it could be historically inspired, as we might see in, in one or two of our examples. And it could just simply be, from a design point of view, what looks the coolest. So this is completely subjective. Matt Easton's uh, five preferences, five favourite um, arms and armour, um, fantasy, movies or franchises. And of course, feel free to post your opinions below, whether you think my choices were good or bad, but equally if there are ones that you think are really good that maybe I've overlooked. Before I go on, I want to point out this video is sponsored very kindly by Raid Shadow Legends. Use my links to download Raid yourself to your mobile phone or PC. What I most like about the game is it's actually quite tactical, so it's essentially a fighting game. You know I'm into fighting and combat and this kind of stuff. Challenge yourself to your edge in the ongoing tournaments. Compete against the entire raid community while fighting the Spider's Den, Ice Golem's Peak, the Almighty Fire Knight, or the Notorious Dragon. And now in raid, patch 1.15 is coming in May, and with it, you'll be able to compete in the brand new arena tournament. Earn points according to your tier and win awesome rewards in the local and global tournaments. Here you've got a kind of end of level boss, as it were. Uh, this is a giant king guy with two guards. Let's have a go and see what we can do against him. And use this spell to attack all of the opponents at once. I'm going to bless the weapons of my team to make them more potent. So go to the video description below, um, you'll find a link there for uh, Raid Shadow Legends that's free to download um, on, on your phone or PC, whatever you prefer. Um, but the special offer is this, if you are a new player you will get 100,000 silver credits or coins, that's actually a lot in the game, I've been playing this game for a couple of weeks, that is actually a lot of credits for this. Um, and you'll get 50 um, gems and you'll get one energy refill and one free good champion called the Executioner. So go to that link below, um, play the game anyway, you know, it's free to download, so why not have it? It's good fun. Um, I found it slightly addictive, but with that special offer below, you will also get those extra things, which will give you a real boost and make it easier to get into the game and um, sort of start beating other people. So go and download it now. New players will find all of those rewards in their inbox in the game. Inbox, which is just up here, looks like a kind of casket. Those are only going to be available to new players and only for the next 30 days. So back to what I consider the five best arms and armor fantasy movies or movie franchises. What are those top five? So honorable mentions go to Jason and the Argonauts, Highlander, which is kind of a historical fantasy film, I suppose. The Princess Bride, but it doesn't have, it has got quite good swords in it, but hasn't got that many of them. Labyrinth, and you might be thinking, what? Well, it does actually, the goblin weapons are actually very nicely done and very, the armor and the weapons of the goblins, very clearly actually inspired by medieval art. Um, and finally, Pirates of the Caribbean, which is set within a historical sort of period, but and the swords and equipment and guns and stuff in it vary over quite a wide period. It's sort of fantasy, yes, it's got kind of zombies in it, basically, hasn't it? It's got the undead and sea creatures, giant sea creatures and stuff. So uh, the uh, Pirates of the Caribbean movies definitely um, should be in there as well. But they didn't make it into the top five. So what did make it into the top five? So in, and only just in, at number five, a movie that a lot of people will have forgotten about, but probably watched as kids, certainly people of my generation, Willow. Um, so people don't necessarily think about uh, Willow in terms of the arms and armour, but actually if you look at it, there is some really clever, educated 
um, choices of arms and armor, swords particularly, and armor particularly. In that movie, uh, we've got um, perfectly reasonably represented um, long swords, for example. We've got the Indian putter. I, I, aside from an Indian movie, I, I can't think of another movie which represents a putter, uh, but we see one in Willow. Uh, used by, uh, it's the same sword, but used by two of the characters. Um, then we've got some true kind of fantasy weapons, um, kind of like with giant saw edges and wavy blades and basket hilts and things like this, which are look quite nicely made and quite nicely designed. They don't look overly heavy, they don't look overly big. And then we've got a big baddie who's using a Zweihander, which is always great to see. A nice, basically historically accurate Zweihander of the 16th century. And then we've got some armour as well. Now the armour is a little bit more variable. Uh, some of the armour is uh, frankly horrible, but we do see real mail or chain mail in there, uh, which is great. It's not knitted mail. We've got real chain mail in there, which is a great thing for a 1980s fantasy movie. And then we've also got uh, some cool elements of plate armour and a helmet which is almost like a merging between European and Japanese uh, historical examples. Um, so I think we've actually got some quite clever and interesting, interesting to look at and exciting to look at arms and armour choices in the movie Willow. In at number four, we have one of my favourite movies of my teenage years. I discovered it. It was an old movie when I discovered it, but um, I discovered it in my teenage years, and that is Excalibur. Um, and I, many people will be saying, Matt, why isn't this higher up uh, the rankings? Uh, and, and I wrestled with this one. I was very tempted to put it higher up than position four in the top five because... The arms and armour in it are magnificent. The armour was all made by uh, an English armourer called Terry English, ironically, and um, he made some of the armour, I believe, was aluminium, some of it was steel. I've heard various anecdotes in my years mixing with the arms and armour communities about uh, every night having to bash the dents out of the aluminium armour um, and it having been a bad idea to use aluminium, but that's aluminium for the American listeners, incidentally. Um, but the swords and the axes and the maces and various other weapons that are represented are very, very nicely done. I've actually had the honour of holding one of the swords. They had several swords for Excalibur that were identical. And uh, I've held one of them and it's a very nice sword. It's just a very nicely made sword. You get a, get a replica made of it, a sharp one, and it would function perfectly nicely. Now, why didn't I put it higher up? Well, quite simply because the armour, while some of it is fantasy, some of the helmets are pure fantasy... Um, and even some of the pauldrons and other elements that are included in, in it are sort of a fantasy take on historical examples. The basic reason why I chose to put it lower down is because the story of Excalibur, whilst, uh, so the story of King Arthur in that movie, it's set in a, essentially a fantasy period with it. It's got magic, um, and it, but it's sort of a historical basis. And they've chosen sort of 15th, 16th century inspired armour and set it in an earlier sort of civilization or fantasy period. And the reason I haven't put it higher is because the armour is too historically inspired, in fact, um, and is not fantasy enough for the specific criteria of this test. So Excalibur, amazing arms and armour, just brilliant. One of the best arms and armour um, movies, I think. Uh, but it's not quite fantasy enough for this top five. So in at number three, this might be a controversial one, is... Conan the Barbarian, and obviously we have to sort of wrap Conan the Destroyer into that as well, although I would say that the production uh, integrity and quality, in my view, of the original Conan the Barbarian is very much higher than Conan the Destroyer, and I won't talk about the modern remake. Um, but the, uh, the weapons, particularly in Conan the Barbarian, um, by Jody Sampson, a famous knife maker, are beautiful. Um, now, there are many things wrong. I've done a related video talking about Conan the Barbarian sword, the Atlantean sword, um, and um, I'll probably do videos at some point talking about the other swords in there. But they are as fantasy, fantasy design, as works of art, and inspiring and looking like something out of a graphic novel or out of fantasy art. They are magnificent. They are magnificently detailed, magnificently made. They look like real weapons. And they look fresh and new. They capture the spirit of the story and this, um, this different world, this foreign uh, fantasy world. And so I think they're great examples of fantasy design. And for that reason, they've made a solid number three. Some people may believe that they should be at number one. And I don't necessarily disagree with them. They are very, very strong designs. The armour... 
is uh, not as strong as the weapons, I would say. There was more emphasis on the weapons than on the armour, but there is some very interesting armour in there, some of it with historical inspiration. But again, they've made everything look fantasy. It's not just a copy of the real world. It, is, it does have fantasy elements to it, and some of it is complete fantasy, and it does look like something straight out of a graphic novel or fantasy art, or like an album cover, like, like a bolt thrower cover or something from the, from the 80s. But so I think it looks fantastic, and I think Conan the Barbarian definitely deserves its number three slot. So in at number two, we have a, a franchise, or a couple of movies, I would say, actually, that... Um, uh, some people may overlook or may have forgotten, and I think they always deserved more credit than they got, but they came out at a time when they were in competition with certain other movies that shared a similar audience, and that is the Narnia movies. So, um, The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe particularly, and um, Prince Caspian even more so, and I would focus on Prince Caspian. And um, Voyage of the Dawn Treader to some degree, but less so. Um, but these movies, they exhibit two of the things that we've talked about in the previous countdown. So they exhibit both historical inspiration and some actually very historical arms and armour. They could have been, some of it, for example, the Telmarines, armour and weapons could have been in a 16th century movie about the um, invasion of uh, America uh, during the South America, during the, um, you know, during the 16th, end of the 15th and beginning of the 16th century. Absolutely. Some of it is historically brilliantly. It's very clearly, to anyone who knows arms and armour, very good quality um, equipment, very well made. Some of the brigandine, some of the swords are beautifully made and beautifully rendered. And ironically, for Narnia movies, some of them are historically more correct and more accurate than we see in actual so-called historical um, movies and stories set during historical periods where they just get everything wrong or the equipment looks like it's rubbish and crappily made. But the reason why the Narnia movies deserve to be in number two, I believe, in this um, top five, is because not only do they bring in the historical arms and armour and do that very, very well, um, for the, particularly for the Telmarines, but in addition, they bring in fantasy armour, weapons, swords, um, armour, for fantasy species. So they've got, you know, fauns and satyrs, they've got um, centaurs, they've got um, minotaurs, various different creatures that are armed and equipped with armour that would make sense to some degree on them and with weapons that would make, for example, centaurs have got big two-handed swords. Well, they've got two hands free on the front of their bodies. They're big guys. They've got a big swing. They can handle a big blade. They've got min minotaurs with big axes and stuff like this. Makes sense. If minotaurs, you know, evolve in a civilization where they're probably fighting with other minotaurs, you need big weapons to fight big big bodied opponents so they've got weapons and armor that has thinking and intelligence and integrity behind it so not only have they chosen the arms and armor well but they've equally made it well so it's it ticks all of the boxes in my book and the Narnia movies certainly for arms and armor deserve a lot more credit than they've got Finally, at number one, I should think that given that it hasn't come up before now in this top five, you know exactly what I'm going to say, and that is the Lord of the Rings movies. Now, indeed, I have made videos in the past talking about various um, bits of equipment from the Lord of the Rings movies. There are things you can criticise in there. And ironically, sometimes when you get so many things right, it opens you up more to criticism when you get a few things really wrong. And I've pointed out things to do with um, certain dwarven weapons, uh, helmets which clearly if they were hit would break the bridge of your nose or arrows or elven arrows that wouldn't penetrate their targets because of their shape um, but these are small criticisms overall the Lord of the Rings particularly the original um, Peter Jackson trilogy really really nails it and it sets the bar so high for every fantasy series coming after that and not just fantasy series but historical series as well Peter Jackson, uh, he managed to create a look for Lord of the Rings, which was not someone else's. It was completely their own. And I think it says a lot when you look at things like um, Games Workshop miniatures, Warhammer miniatures, and you see what they made for Lord of the Rings stuff before Peter Jackson and what they made for Lord of the Rings after Peter Jackson. And it's completely different. And indeed, I agree 
with the critics that say that the arms and equipment in the movies are um, of a higher technology than perhaps are represented in the books. In the books, probably most people are supposed to be in more of a kind of dark age, a kind of like Viking era, Carolingian, Anglo-Saxon era of technology, whereas in the movies, we're really looking at about a 16th century, maybe 15th century level of technology. We've got plate armour, we've got long swords, and so on and so forth. But nevertheless, he created an absolutely iconic look for the arms and armour in Lord of the Rings. And there is historically inspired equipment in there. There is plate armour that looks more or less believable and is individual to each civilization in each race. Um, so, so the riders of Rohan have completely different type of armour to um, the, um, the people of Gondor, for example. The, the orcs and the goblins, the Urukai, they all have different armour to each other. Um, then we've got, obviously, the elves have got their very characteristic weapons and equipment. We've got swords that look like real swords, but also fantasy swords. We've got some that look like historical swords, like long swords and arming swords. A Boromir's sword, for example, you could stick in a 14th century movie and no one will batter an eyelid. Um, and, uh, but then equally, you've got fantasy swords like uh, some of the elven swords, which have historical inspiration because, of course, they, uh, real swords have to suit certain parameters. So you're going to have convergent evolution. But nevertheless, they look uh, totally iconic and in individual to the elves as well. They look like elven weapons. Um, and then you've got things like Sting, so beautifully crafted and created. It looks like a real short sword. It looks like a real sword. You could make a sharp version of it now and you could go and fight with it. You could use it. It looks like a real weapon. It looks like a sharp steel weapon. Um, so Peter Jackson and obviously um, the, the uh, Weta, 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 I don't know how to pronounce it, workshop who produced all of the um, uh, arms and equipment for that movie and Peter Lyon who designed the swords just deserve all of the accolades and credits you can give them because they have set the bar for everything which will follow. Not only did they make real looking arms and equipment that looks great, but it looks totally fantasy. It looks totally right to the different environments and races and species that it's uh, being worn by. And, um, and it just looks, it looks great and it's so iconic. Anyway, I hope you have watched uh, this uh, top five all the way down to the end and I hope you've enjoyed it. As I said before, feel free to share your views, um, what you think, maybe there were ones that I've overlooked. There are movies out there which obviously have terrible arms and armour. There are some terrible movies which have good arms and armour and there are some really good movies that have terrible arms and armour. But I feel that this top five is a fair encapsulation of movies which do show good arms and armour that is also good fantasy arms and armour. So once again, thanks to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. It's a great fun little game, free to download and you've got that special offer. Download link below. Go and give it a go, have some fun. My name is Captain Context on the game. That's right, I changed my avatar and username to that. Uh, so you can come and hunt me down and kill me. Um, this might be the only chance you ever get. So go and download uh, for free, have some fun, and maybe I'll see you on there and you can give me a good drubbing on there. Uh, see you soon, thanks for watching. Cheers as always, and give us a like and a subscribe, and I'll see you really soon for another video on Scholar Gladiatorial channel. Cheers, folks. Thanks for watching. We've got extra videos on Patreon. Please give our Facebook a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers, folks.